welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Ann Helbig. Today we have Tablo with us. He has done anything that you could think of in the entertainment industry other than his own line of whiskey. You'll hear why. He also had a terrible um, gastrointestinal um, problem in Arizona. Um, but other than that, he's a highly acclaimed rapper, musician, author, father, um, husband, etc. So enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Tableau. No, not, not too deep. Are you ever in the mood for a great tasting beer, but not the buzz or the hangover that comes with it? Enter Brooklyn Brewery's Special Effects, a delicious, flavorful, brand new brew that happens to be non-alcoholic. Special Effects is not just for folks who don't drink alcohol. It's for anyone who wants to do more with their days and nights. So head to brooklynbrewery.com slash special effects for for more info and to see where you can pick up a six pack or two near you. Tablo, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. It's good um, to be here. Yeah, I, you're here because I couldn't get your daughter. Here, oh, yes. So this is the replacement. And my my last like nine years of my career. Is she's nine? Yeah, she's nine. So the last nine years of my career have been like as you know that. Yeah, it's, people try to get her. Well, that's um, she's perfect. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, what's it like to raise a perfect daughter? <laughs> uh, it's it's like I'm her friend. I'm her friend. You're her peer. Her yeah. less perfect peer. Yeah. yeah. And I think she just looks at me as like this, you know, not so perfect person. Yeah. Uh, to just have fun with. Is she developing a desire to get into entertainment at all? Um, she likes dancing. So she, dancing. She's actually really into Billie Eilish. Oh, cool. Um, so I found her like learning the dances and uh, she's into a lot of like K-pop girl group yeah. um, choreograph choreography. So she's like uh, choreographing herself and like just doing crazy dances. And then I asked her, I was like, hey, do you want to do music? Do you want to do like K-pop or whatever yeah. when you grow up? And she's like, no. Really? Yeah. And I'm like, then why are you learning the dances? She's like, because it's fun. Does that hurt your heart or is that actually kind of I mean, like that's, that's cool. That reaffirming? She, she can do whatever she wants. <laughs> yeah. And then I also caught her like making YouTube videos where she was doing a but lot. But you caught her making YouTube videos? Yeah, because she, she closed the door and I could hear her like, you know, talking to like a like, camera. Hey guys. Yeah, yeah. So I knocked and she let me in and I was like, can I see what you're making? And she's like, yeah. And she played it for me. And I'm like, this is great. And she was doing a lot of acting too Aww. on on this YouTube show that is not ever being aired. Right, 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 right. Like this is just for her. Yeah. And I'm like, so do you want to go into acting like your mom? And she's like, no. Really? And I'm like, then why are you doing this? She's like, it's fun. So she's getting all the things her parents do for a living out of her system yes. at eight or nine years yes. old. And then she's going to end up being some like amazing scientist. Yes, I think so. <laughs> she says she wants to uh, go into saving animals. Oh. So I said, so like a vet. And she's like, no, 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 not, not just a vet. Like I want to be able to like go out and literally save a lot of animals. Amazing. Yeah. So she wants to be a vet slash like animal rescuer. Okay. Um, <laughs> so she's going to be. That can yeah. dance and rap. So she's gonna yeah. oh, so she's gonna be a triple threat. Yes. <laughs> she's gonna act, dance, and save yes. animals. And do YouTube. And do YouTube. Wow, yes. quadruple threat. Um, here's my well, my actual first question for you. Mm -hmm. Are you tired? What do you mean? In life in general. Like tired with life? <laughs> tired with how much stuff you've done in your entire life to date. Um, sometimes I get worried that other people will get tired of it. Oh, yeah. You know? That's, yeah. I'm not tired of it yet. Great. Um, I'm always looking for the next thing to do. And, um, I always have things like in motion. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do have like a constant fear that s other people will get tired of it. Right. Really? From yeah. seeing too much of me or, mm -hmm. um, from having like years of my music. Yeah. So um, I think that's why I take time in between albums. Sometimes yeah. we take like two, three years. Because you guys, let's let's talk about just like from the beginning for people mm -hmm. that might be listening that don't know you at mm -hmm. all. So you started, you're, you're, you've moved around a ton when you were younger. Yes. Uh, but then you landed in Vancouver. Uh, so 
First, I was born in Seoul, mm -hmm. immediately taken to Jakarta. Okay. Uh, which I don't think is like safe. I don't think parents are supposed to do that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, like you're not <laughs> supposed to take like a like an infant like on a plane. Yeah. But they clearly didn't care. Uh -huh. um, they <laughs> they took let me. your parents do yeah. it. So I grew up in Jakarta for a little while. Uh, apparently, Indonesian was the f like that language was the first language I learned. Wow! And then I went to Korea at some at a certain point, um, and then I ended up in Vancouver. Okay, yeah. I like that you uh, say at a certain point. At yeah. some point, I was in Korea, and at some it's, point, I was in Vancouver. I was also in <laughs> Hong Kong and like Jeez. Europe for a little bit. Like my parents make my childhood a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> To me, like they won't tell me the exact details of what happened. So you get to go, I don't know if I dreamt this or if this was reality. Yeah. So, but I do remember like from Vancouver on, I have a very good memory of like what happened. Okay. So in Vancouver, is that where you started doing music? Uh, no, 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 no. I started uh, doing music pretty much in high school in Seoul. In Seoul, okay. Yes, I started off by... Uh, it, it actually wasn't like music music. I was writing poetry at the time. Okay. And somehow a very famous musician in Korea at the time, he was, you know, like the most famous musician in Korea. Mm -hmm. And he somehow got in my my poetry in his hands. I don't know how really? that happened because I was just a high school kid. Wow. Um, I guess it traveled hands and got to him. Okay. And then he was trying to do a song in English mm -hmm. and he wanted the lyrics to be very poetic. Um, and he, you know, just called up and hired me to write lyrics. He called you on the phone. Yeah. Do you remember that phone call? Yeah, I was like, that's, because I didn't have a cell phone at the time. <laughs> right, no one has cell phone. The internet doesn't yeah. exist at this time, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you got to be at the phone at, <laughs> at your house, like at that specific time. Uh -huh. And if you're like a minute late, you might miss the call that right. changes your life. Unless you have an answering machine. Yeah. So I got the call and I, I didn't believe that it was, you know, for real. Yeah. And um, and actually, like, I wasn't too into, like, becoming a musician or anything like that. Okay. Um, I just liked writing a lot. So I went over and started working on the lyrics. Um, and the album came out during winter break. Okay. And I went back to school. And here... Did you tell your friends that this had happened? No, but he <laughs> here is where my life changed. Okay. So before this happened, before the winter break, like I was popular among kids just as, you know, like a fun guy to be with. <laughs> um, I had a good group of friends and stuff. Yeah. There were certain- Good, healthy social yeah, life. Yeah. yeah. Certain girls, you know, might have, may have th thought that I was cute, <laughs> but it wasn't like a, I wasn't like a big deal. Right. And then winter break happened and this album came out and word spread um, that, you know, Daniel, uh -huh. I was Daniel at the time, yeah. um, is writing lyrics for this guy <gasps> and is in music now. And then I get back to school and I was like super popular. Wow. Like What a um, weird thing. Yeah. Our school had like elementary to high school. Yeah. All like all in a couple buildings. So you guys all grew up together every, yeah. yeah. And there were like middle school, like kids, like, you know, like coming to the high school building to get a glimpse of the guy that is in music now. Wow. And at the time I was like, oh, so this is what happens if you do music. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a singer songwriter. dude. <laughs> this is um, this is the coolest feeling ever. Yeah, this is the best feeling I've ever had. Yeah. Like people like care about me. I am noticed. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons why I like sort of got into music in a way. Wow. That's yeah. very unique. Yeah. And very. And, and shallow. Oh, I mean, why are we, we're all fucking narcissists. That's why we're all here doing this. So it's all the same thing. Don't even worry about I was it. Like, I was like, girls, but also girls you, like me now. Yeah, I want to be liked by more girls. <laughs> how do I do that? Um, okay, so how did Epic High come in to play? Uh, and then I ended up in college. And while I was in college, I did like an underground um, group, like just for fun. Okay. And then one of the demos I made, again, changed hands. 
Um, you have this magic touch, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I'm, you know, nobody knows how it gets out there. But um, <laughs> so my demo circulated a little bit and somehow got into certain agencies in Korea. Okay. And um, I was, they contacted me. They were like, can you come in? Because we want to like talk about having you as an artist. Wow. And this was while I was in college. So during breaks, I would go back to Seoul and I, I, I went to some of these. What were you studying in college at the time? Uh, English Lit. Okay. So uh, a lot of people were telling me like, you know, with that major, you're going to have to figure out quick, like what you're going to do after. Right. Yeah. Graduation. What are you going to do? Yeah. So I, I went back and did like some auditions. I didn't know it was going to be an audition. Okay. I went in, they made me like rap. And then they're like, can you sing a little bit? I sang a little bit. They're like, can you dance? And I'm like, I don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, they tried to put me in a, like a boy band at a certain point. They, oh, really? Yeah. One of these companies. Okay. And it's a, it's a huge company. Yeah. Um, and I, I was like, I, I'm not for that. Like I, I, I good don't, for you. Yeah, I don't think I'm good enough to do that. Like, <laughs> I know my abilities. I, I cannot dance. dance. <laughs> yeah, I can't dance. I can only rap. If they want to dance around me, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But yeah, if I'm the center and everyone's yeah. just dancing around me. Um, so I went back to school thinking I wouldn't, you know, be a, be a musician. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, maybe I'll be a novelist uh, or going to film. What a dream. A novelist. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to keep writing. Yeah. And then... Um, the word spread, I guess, and someone else wanted me on uh, to be an artist. And then I was like, maybe I'll try it for a couple of years mm -hmm. after graduation. And and then it led to this. Wow. Yeah. It led, wait, okay. So Epic High. Oh, Epic High. So after, um, so the last year that I had left in college, yeah. I was in Seoul for winter break. And somebody was like, hey, you know, like, do you want to be in our hip hop group? You know, and it was Mithra and this this uh, producer. Okay. And I was like, well, I gotta go back and finish school first. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Good like, for you. It sounds like fun. <laughs> and while I you have all these casual, amazing opportunities yeah. that just enter your universe, and you're like, maybe I guess that's cool. <laughs> and I went back to school, and I did. We started making songs over like MS Messenger, Microsoft really? Messenger. Yeah. Like, I actually met the DJ that's in our team, DJ Two Cuts. Uh -huh. I didn't even meet him. Like, the first thing I got from this kid was, like, him, his mix set, right? And mm -hmm. he was, like, doing scratches and stuff. And I was like, this is really cool. We need a DJ in our team. Yeah. And um, so it was like, we did it all over this messenger thing where we would send lyrics to each other. That's nuts. And then by the time school ended and I came back, um, we were already a group. Wow, really? Yeah, so it was So like, how old are you at this time? It, this was uh, right after college. So like t I was, I had just turned 21. Wow. And um, so it was like internet dating in a way. Right? Yeah, it seems like-, like you were, We were way ahead. <laughs> you were like, saying ASL to each other, yeah. but like, uh, like location song. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it, it was very Tinder-ish. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that's how we met. And then we became a team and, um, you know, we've been together since. Wow. Yeah. That's so, so you guys have been together for tw like 20 years? No. Um, so. 15, 10? Since 2002. So we met in 17. 2001, but truly met as three in 2002. So that's 17 years. 17 years is. Yeah. yeah. That's so it's bonkers. That's awfully long time. That's, I mean, how, how, how? How? I don't know. I um, I mean, do you guys have a limit on how much time you can be around each other now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we like, spend <laughs> way too much time together yeah. like with the tours and stuff. Yeah. The North American tour, we're, we were on a bus together for like a month. Oh. So um, that's a lot of time to be spending with people. That What's the grossest thing that happened on the bus? Uh, well, nothing gross happened because you couldn't go number two on the bus. Well, that's a, my actual inference of that question. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was the most difficult thing for me. It's just like telling someone that they need to pull over. Well, I feel I kept feeling bad because our driver, you know, he has to like, that's a long drive. Yeah. And you're driving like while you guys are sleeping, yeah, right? Across yeah. a desert yeah. and stuff. And like, it was in Arizona, I think. I felt horrible having to like 
ask him to find a place I can stop. Yeah. <laughs> and he did find a place for me to stop. And I, I tried to go and it was not a place, you know, I just <laughs> like, it was, it was the wrong place to be uh, for me. Uh -huh. And I was, I was just, I was shocked by <laughs> what I saw. And I ran back into the bus and I was like, go, go, go. Like, I'm, and he's like, he's like, did you handle it? And I'm like, no, I'm not handling it. I'm just going to hold on until I see buildings. Like, yeah. yeah. This is what I've seen horrors that have pushed this back into my I, gastrointestinal system. I really did see some horrors. Um, yeah, I should have been more suspicious because like, it was weird that there was, it was, you know, vast plots of desert, just yeah, desert. Just that's it. And, yeah. and a, a tiny like cabin looking thing. Yeah. I shouldn't, I should have known right away that that's not. You never know unless you experience yeah, it. Yeah. It was. You don't want to assume. And think, so when you get there and you realize I can't realize believe I'm it, talking about this right now. I'm really appreciative that yeah, you're talking about this right now. These are the glamorous moments of tour that people want to know yeah, about. Yeah. It was, it's all the flashing and lights on stage and the fans and all that. I want to know that you were too grossed out to take a shit somewhere yeah, in Arizona. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, wait, how long was that tour? That tour was uh, like a month. Uh, just in North America. Was that the first time you guys all took a bus tour together? Yes. It's the first time we did a bus tour at all. Really? Yeah. But we've always done it with planes. Okay. And I hate getting on planes like every day. Yeah, that's exhausting. Um, So my manager, Eddie, uh, at EN Management, shout out. Mm -hmm. um, he's been here. Yeah. He's like, dude, you got to do the bus tour. It's so much better. Mm -hmm. And for the first half of it, I was like, I'm going to kill Eddie. <laughs> Uh, cause these bunks, I had so much trouble sleeping in the bunks. Yeah. They look claustrophobic yeah, to me. We couldn't do number two on the bus. Like right. I said, because you have to pay like $300 or something or $500 every time you do that. Wait, is that for real? Right. It's, there was a sign on that the said, actual tour bus. Yeah. Because they have to hire somebody to clean it. Oh, it's not like an RV. And like, yeah, yeah. And every time you have to pay like 500 bucks. <laughs> And, That's the most expensive And I got to say, ever. sometimes, <laughs> like, I felt like... I wouldn't be able to do that at all. I felt like just, like, maybe just paying. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I'd be mean, like, uh, like, here, just flexing. take my card, keep a tab open because I don't know what's going to happen. Or just giving them, like, $10,000 in yeah. cash and just be like, I'm going to be here for a while. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but there's other people on the bus too. And it's like, you know, you're trying to Ugh. not make it dirty. So. Wow. Yeah. That Did you learn a lot? Would you do it again? Uh, I'm going to have to do it again. You are? Yeah. Next year, we're probably going to tour again. And it's better than a plane. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What's the one thing that you've learned that you're going to switch up this time uh, outside of the number two situation? Well, m don't stop in the middle of the desert yeah, in fair. Arizona <laughs> and think it's okay to walk into a strange cabin. Did um, you walk into just someone's house and try to use uh, If it was someone's house, it would have been better. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about what I... <laughs> what you saw yeah, what, it seems like it still haunts you so I we're just, gonna take a quick break i just spent the <laughs> last six months like suppressing this you've been in therapy i'm sorry that i triggered you uh we're gonna take a quick break when we get back i got more questions for you and then we're gonna get to some twitter questions for okay. you we'll be right back with more not too deep Today, we have support from a company that is here to support you in your breast area. That's right. We got support from Third Love today. Designed with measurements from millions of women, Third Love's bra styles are made to fit your life. They have over 80 bra sizes, but know that the only one that matters is yours. You guys have heard me talk about Third Love for so long, but it's only because they are so good. I wear sports bras all the time. I don't like the way bras feel. I always feel a little uncomfortable, a little restrained. Uh, and Third Love's bras are truly so comfortable. You do not feel like you're wearing a bra, but you do feel like you're being a thousand percent supported. It's hands down the most comfortable bra that you'll own. They have straps that don't slip. They have tagless labels and they have lightweight memory foam cups that mold to your shape. Plus returns and exchanges are free and easy. In fact, thanks 
to Third Love's perfect fit promise, every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. And if you don't love it, you can return it and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. It's a win-win situation for everyone. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering you guys 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash grace now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash grace for 15% off today. All right, we're back. What's your deal with aliens? Uh, I like them. You like them? Yeah. Okay. You- um, I believe that there are aliens. Me too. Yeah, and I don't think it has to contradict anyone's beliefs or you know whatever individual beliefs they have. Sure. I think they they might just be there, like there's lions and tigers and bees. Yeah, yeah. I think it's selfish for us to think that we're the only things that exist in the entire universe. Yeah, and we are aliens to them. Yeah. So, what would you say if you saw another life form? Uh, like an alien life form? What, yeah. what would I like say Like if it to came down to you, mm-hmm. that might have been what you saw in Arizona, but uh, if it came down to you, like mm-hmm. what, how would you communicate? First thing I would say is don't kill me. Please, <laughs> please don't kill me. Yeah. Like, okay, let's say hypothetically you had 30 seconds mm-hmm. to talk to this alien and this alien's going back to its home planet and communicating with the rest of its culture. What would you try to communicate in those 30 seconds for it to take back if it's hypothetically able to understand what you're saying? I would I would spend the 30 seconds showing him like trying to like describe or sing something to show <laughs> the beauty of humankind. Oh, I was because, gonna say, I think you're gonna give him like your mixtape. No, 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 like twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. You you held it twenty dollars. Uh, no, but I would spend thirty seconds like trying to describe to him the the beauty of humankind because mm. I am convinced that aliens, if they ever do come, mm-hmm. uh, will for sure um, either destroy us, right, or eat us. So that's destroying. Yeah. Us. So I would have to show him that we are as a species, you know, worth preserving. Yeah. And not killing and eating. Yeah. Yes. That we're not threatening yes. in a way. And it's a very short time to be able to do that. 30 seconds. Yeah. But I don't know what I would mention. Maybe like, you know. Maybe just um, one. Like Beyonce. I would be like. <laughs> Just show my photo of like, Beyonce. Beyonce and then like, this is why we're worth preserving because she's still alive right now. This is this is Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> you're just showing you're just like playing you're random so, things. You're just Spotify I'm like, playlists. Have you seen this show called Killing Eve? It's <laughs> it's so good. I, I don't want I want to know what happens in the next season. And then the alien goes back and he's like with his friends and he's like, dude, these kids are hopeless. <laughs> Let's go wipe them out. Like he was playing weird things for me. He's trying to show me Killing Eve. We've evolved so much from there. Um, Are you going to continue writing short stories? Uh, I don't know what form it'll take. Yeah. But, you know, for me, writing short stories, writing poetry and writing raps or writing songs, Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's all the same thing. Yeah. You know, like I... I go into it thinking exactly the same and feeling exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And like, there's something I want to say and I just choose a medium to do that. Yeah. Right. So um, whether it's always through music or, you know, I might one day like write a screenplay or, or a play or a musical or something. Yeah. Um, It doesn't really matter what it is. A musical feels like a great step. Yeah. yeah, and even podcasting. Like, yeah, when I started the Tableau podcast, like, you know, I went into it exactly as I would step on stage mm-hmm. at a show, right? Like, I'm doing it for the fans and I'm talking to them. So the content that appears on my podcast would would sort of be like writing for me too, you know? Yeah, I so, mean, does it feel at all different to be able to be unedited in a podcast versus like? trying to be on stage a little bit more edited? I think so. Like writing a song, like I stress myself out like crazy because literally I will spend like a month changing a word. Sure. Um, When no one would notice, but like I need it to be perfect for me at Mm -hmm. least. And for with podcasting, you can't do that, right? Right. Or your staff will just quit. (laughs) Diane's out of there. (laughs) Producer Diane, is. if I'm like, if I'm like, okay, stop, go back a little bit. I want to redo that sentence. But then it's also so inauthentic. Right? Yeah, and they would hate it, right? Yeah. 
And so it's like you say what you feel at the time and it's out there. Yeah. And I actually love it. It's like improv in a way. Yeah. Yeah. You're having a conversation yeah. about your thoughts. Yes. And you are you doing it. And people are listening to other people having conversations. Isn't that bizarre? It's it's bizarre, but I totally understand. Yeah. Um, a couple weeks ago, I actually found myself doing that. I went into this uh, Korean barbecue restaurant. Well, it was in Seoul. So, of mm -hmm. course, just a barbecue restaurant. <laughs> yeah. um, I went to a bar barbecue restaurant and I'm sitting there and it was a small room where they had two tables. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I were at one table and right next to us, there was another you know table yeah and they were fighting about something and this one person i guess is thinking about quitting her job because okay. her co-workers are horrible okay right and she was telling this story to the friend that she was with yeah and my wife and i realized that for like an hour neither of us talked and listening. we were just nodding <laughs> Like <laughs> nodding to her story this and eating. This accidental podcast yeah. that was happening next to you. And, but it was riveting, the story. Yeah. And there were certain elements that like I could identify with. <laughs> and then the, the girl that was telling the story, she started crying. Oh. Like while eating great Korean barbecue. Right? So you have dinner and a show happening Yeah, right she's, now. she's like crying. And I'm about to cry because <laughs> I'm now so invested in this story. <laughs> You know, and my <laughs> wife and I are like, oh, my God. Right. So, and she has no idea that you guys are fully in yeah. it with her. Yeah. And that is the beauty of podcast. <laughs> you know, it's happening like in real life, too. Yeah. Like that's it's great hearing people's conversations. Mm. I love it. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things eavesdropping in other yes, people's yes. worlds. <laughs> no one is safe. If you're talking out loud, I'm allowed I'm to listening. hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how did you meet your wife? Uh, I met my wife first at a cell phone store. Okay. Um, at the time, I wouldn't say we met. Okay. Really, um, <laughs> I was stalking her. Yeah. She, well, <laughs> no, she, like we were both getting phones. Okay. Uh, we didn't know. We didn't look to see who each other were. Uh huh. And she was sitting next to me and uh, putting a screen protector on her phone. Uh huh. And she was so meticulous about it, and I, I, I could only see this person's hands putting this thing on the on a phone. Right. And it was so careful <laughs> that I was watching it uh, while waiting for my phone, and I was like. You know, you don't have to put that on. Like, you can just, <laughs> like, it, it, it doesn't matter, right? Like, you just, said this yeah, to her? I was like, you, you're going, you know, you're going through so much you're trouble. You're stressed out about yeah, this. Yeah. Just take it off, <laughs> right? And she's, I see the hand stop, right? Uh huh. And then rip it off. And then the person walked out. And I was like, and you never looked at her face the whole time? Yeah, I didn't. Right. I could only see her hand and her phone. And the reason why she stopped and walked out was uh, my member Two Cuts was behind me. Uh -huh. And he, he I don't know if this makes him a douchebag, <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure that wasn't his intention. <laughs> OK. But he was like, yeah, if it's if it scratches, just get a new one. <laughs> so he said okay. And this was like four months into our first like big break. Okay. Okay. Our we had just recently released a song called Fly, uh -huh. and it was a huge success in Korea. And we had struggled up until that point. Sure. So I'm sure Two Cuts was like, he was just like feeling ball. himself. Yeah, he day. was balling at the time, <laughs> yeah. right? So he's like, if it scratches, just get a new one. <laughs> and she probably thought that this was really lame. Yeah. And then ripped it off and then left. And the person that was um, handing me my phone was like, that was um, Kang Hye Jung, yeah. the actress Kang Hye Jung. And I'm like, because I was a fan of her. So I was like, oh my God. I was like, too, because she's going to think we're like assholes. <laughs> and you truly did not look at her face yeah, the whole time. Because we're very close together. Like, and there's other... You're side by side and you're yeah. all looking at your own phones. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then... Like a few years later. Years um, later? Yeah, years later. Uh, she came to a show that I did. Uh-huh. And I ended up finally meeting her. Wow. And then one thing led to another. And immediately a baby was born. Wow. This is modern romance. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, it, it, yeah, we dated. And like I thought she would hate me. So I actually asked. I was like, do you remember like like... 
a couple of years ago, three years ago, like that phone. Yeah. And she's like, of course I remember. Right. And um, wow. my wife's sister was like, I thought you guys were so lame. <laughs> like, when, Wait, because did she know who you were in that moment? Yeah, we both knew who we were. Oh. But like she wasn't really into our music at the time. Okay. And then eventually, I guess she became like a fan of our music as yeah. well. So she came to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, um, you That's, know. I mean, you guys should get free phones from that phone company wherever you are for the rest of your lives. Unfortunately, phones tra- changed dramatically since. Oh, uh, true. Yeah, true. and Apple's not. <laughs> you don't want those flip phones? <laughs> yeah. I think it was like, a, I, I, got, I had a Prada phone. I was buying Prada? a Prada phone. What's a Prada phone? I don't even know what a, that is. It it looks like a smartphone, but it's not. Okay. And it was like, but it it was like co it was like a co production thing with uh, LG and Prada, I think. Wow. So it, it was designer like designer phone, gold and stuff. I bet. If you look at it now, it looks ancient. Yeah. But at the time, it was like the coolest thing. Yeah. And Two Cuts was like saying, you know, <laughs> if you scratch it, just get a new one. <laughs> Very lame. Oh, I love it. Okay. On that note, would you rather only be allowed to watch uh, shows and movies from your wife's filmography Mm -hmm. or only ever be allowed to listen to Epic High albums? Uh, I I choose Epic High albums. Wow. Um, Not not because, like, I love myself or I don't want to – well – my wife's films, yeah. Some of my wife's films are like pretty disturbing. Okay. Um, and you know she's a very versatile actor, so she's in projects that are some projects are like really, really, you know, like old boy. Yeah. And for me to have to like keep rewatching that, it's tough. Yeah. That well, that would <laughs> not be good for my health, like my my mental health. Yeah, that might ruin the relationship. Yeah, a little and bit. you know, I can, I have to listen to my music all the time, anyways. True. So, like, when I'm on stage, I'm, you know, just listening to my music. So. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. yeah so I'll if just, you were on stage having to watch your I'll just choose movie. that. Yeah. I can't see old boy over and over again. <laughs> um, okay. Would you trust your manager, Eddie, to pull off a high stakes heist with you? Uh, no. No? <laughs> he has too much integrity. Oh, okay. Yeah, and usually artists won't say this about their, like, you know, manager. Yeah. But... He has too much integrity. And even with the Tableau podcast and like Dive Studios where my podcast is being, Mm -hmm. you know, that network has way too much integrity. So like that's why like none of us are making money. Um, (laughs) Everything is free. (laughs) But you guys also feel like a, a family. Like looking at your Instagram and you're like, Posting videos of him, like, traveling with you. Yeah. It feels like you guys are We're very... really good friends. Yeah. And, you know, he was only supposed to be on my podcast once in a while, but, like, he's now, like, a co-host almost, right? <laughs> he's, like, there every other episode. And, like, we finally made merch, right? Okay. And even that, with that, like, th- this guy has so much integrity that he will never sell out. <laughs> you know? Like there are what a so, bummer. There's so many ways we could sell out with the merch. You know, like, so you're managing him as your manager, basically. And they actually take care to like make these things. Uh, and which that's which disgusting. Which which is the way it should be done. Disgusting. Which is the way I would do it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm course. just saying certain people will do everything to sell out. Yeah. And make a ton of money doing it. Yeah. I'm not saying I would do that. I wouldn't, and right. you wouldn't either. No. But there are other people that are selling out constantly. Yeah. And making a ton of money, though. Yeah. 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 I mean, foof. In another life. Yeah. In another life. Yeah. <laughs> like some of these startups. Yeah. Man, they are doing horrible things. But making a ton of money. Doing oh yeah, job. I've been yeah. on YouTube. I yeah. understand. Like, how I would else. never do that. No, I could never do that. You no. I just don't know how. 
No, that's same. I don't yeah. have that gene in my body to let me do that. Yeah. I have too much guilt and remorse about me that too. kind of me thing. Me too. Yeah. And I also, it's a, it's a. But also, you're a family man now too, so you got to have integrity for your daughter. Of course, yeah. of course. Who I've is gotta... the one that can sell out? Let your daughter sell. Yeah. Out. <laughs> At the same time, it's also a lack of information thing. Yeah. Like I just don't know how to sell out. Like yeah. To to so the level. So if you level. had those tools, maybe you would. Yeah. Like if someone sat me down and was like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tableau, just do this and this and this and you'll have a billion dollars, right? Done and done. I would have to really think about selling out, right? <laughs> right? Like, even if... Yeah, if it was an X, Y, and Z process, I yeah. probably wouldn't do it if I was hurting somebody or something. Sure. But, um, you know, hurting yourself. you could think about it though. Oh, yeah, right? the thought of it. I would sure. have to consider it if I just knew how. Yeah. Well, this is now uh, an open invitation for everyone to give you the information for how you could sell out. Yes, and we'll see yes. what you do with it. Mark Zuckerberg, call me. <laughs> call me. Um, what is your fan scenario like? Like what? I mean, everyone seems extremely sweet, extremely supportive, uh -huh. extremely like respectful in a way. Um, do you have like a bonkers fan story like of anyone like not even to a terrible degree but just to like a surprising well i feel like you probably have something every show you guys do yeah my fans are very diverse um they say that we are like pretty weird as people but i think <laughs> my fans are just like us yeah um you cultivate the same kind yeah. of like personality types uh there was this one thing um that was on tour so you know, you look out into the crowd, right. there's like thousands of people, so you can't spot everything. Sure. But some people have like these huge signs. Mm -hmm. And um, there was one sign that like you could not avoid. <laughs> okay? okay. And the, the problem was I stepped on stage and I spotted it immediately because <laughs> not only... It wasn't that it was huge, but it, it... It was that it wasn't small. <laughs> yeah, and the message was huge. Okay, oh. it was like, I want to... And then, you know, like, very explicit. <laughs> um, not even, like, using euphemisms. You know, there are so many other ways to even say what that person was trying to convey. Yeah, just flat out just direct message. Direct, like, dictionary.com, <laughs> you know, like... I don't want you to take this in any other way I except for what I'm trying to tell you here. And I unfortunately saw this immediately as I stepped on stage. Okay. And sorry to the other thousands of fans there. But for that show, I was not able to see anything else. Okay. And the thing is. Mithra and Two Cuts, they don't speak English, right? As well as I do, of right, course, right? Yeah. They're not very good at English, but sure. they're good enough to understand to that sign. Know exactly <laughs> what that sign said, okay? Actually, those are probably the only words in English that Two Cuts knows <laughs> and also in that se in that sequence, okay? In that exact sequence. So, they spot it and I know he spotted it because I look back as I'm rapping. Yeah. And Two Cuts is like giving me the eye, <laughs> like telling me to look over there, right? Because he's shocked. Yeah. And Mithra is shocked. Uh, and the whole show was like, and I, I think I mentioned it during the show. I was like, uh, oh, I'm really sorry, but that sign is like really out there. Like, <laughs> I can't focus. Can you like? And um, yeah, that was the one memory wow. I have. And also it's, hilarious to me to imagine that person in their home mm -hmm. like diligently making, making this, this sign right? like, and like their parents maybe seeing them and being yeah. like i made art look at me like taking a, a marker and like taking care of with each letter like right. d yeah. you know like <laughs> really filling that in yeah um, and make and like like readjusting the edges yeah. because like this is a little askew and i really messes want them... it up a bit and it gets like oh she's like she's got to do, it, gotta again. do it again like D. this i have a blueprint in my brain yeah wow i mean but kudos for the execution uh of an idea yes and yes. also kudos to you guys for 
you know, making it through that show. <laughs> yes, it was very hard. It was very hard. But thank you. I understand it's all out of love. It's truly all out of love. Yes. A very dirty, filthy, direct love. Yes. Um, okay, we're going to take one last break. And when we get back, we have Twitter questions for you, okay. which are very I'm invasive afraid. and fun. Okay. I will be right back with more Not Too Deep. No. 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 As the creators of Clean Beauty, Bare Minerals is driven by a philosophy that makeup and skincare should make your skin better, not just better looking. That's why their best-selling original foundation is made with only five ingredients, all minerals. For Bare Minerals to be clean without compromise means good for skin formulas with proven performance. Upgrade to Clean Beauty products. Use the foundation finder at bareminerals.com to find your perfect match. Get 20% off when you use the promo code not too deep. Bare Minerals, the power of good. No, not too deep. It's holiday season, and that means a lot of new stuff will be piling up underneath your tree or whatever item you used to celebrate the holidays. So why not make some space by selling the stuff you don't use anymore on Mercari. Mercari is the selling app that makes selling your stuff fast and easy. You just go through your home, find all the good stuff you don't use, like the phone in the drawer, the jeans you wore that one time, the handbag that you didn't even know that you had and you don't want anymore in the back of your closet. Then you take a few pics, you add a description, and boom, your items are connected to millions of buyers. It's super easy. Mercari even emails you a shipping label when it sells. You can even use Mercari to buy gifts too with millions of sellers. You never know what treasures that you'll find. And the app has over 500,000 reviews on the App Store with an average 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? Finally, an app that makes you money. Check out Mercari and lighten the load this holiday. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I. Mercari, the selling app. All right, we're back with Tableau. Woo-hoo. Before we get into these Twitter questions, I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every single guest uh-huh. that is on the podcast. And the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Cold spaghetti at? Yeah. Um. So I'm assuming I have to, like, hate this person? It's up to you. It can be celebratory if you want it to be. Um. Uh, Thomas Edison. We've never had Thomas Edison as an answer. Okay, yeah, Thomas Edison. Any any reason why? I mean, like he, he's a great inventor. Yes, yeah. um, <laughs> you just like to we, shake him up a little. We bit. owe him a lot. <laughs> yeah. you know, but he did certain experiments with animals. Uh huh. You know, t- for to get ahead. Okay. Uh, and uh, I gotta throw some spaghetti at him for oh, that. Oh wow. Okay. And then, but I will also tell him, you know, thank you for the light bulb. And, thank you, but also like, yeah. fuck you. Like, yeah. <laughs> there were better ways to figure this yeah, out. Yeah, and my daughter will be like, Daddy, I love you. <laughs> okay. The other question I ask every single guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or a close call, but you can only use three words or small phrases. Uh-huh. So for example, mine is college jogging front lawn. Okay. Yeah. Vancouver paper route. <laughs> Vancouver paper route? Yes. <laughs> All right. No follow-up questions, but I'll just let everyone fill in the blanks for themselves. Uh, Okay, let's get into these Twitter questions. Uh, Tableau mentions in his podcast he's working on new music and it's going great. Please ask him to elaborate on that for us. Uh, I lied. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I'm good. I lied. Uh, I say that once in a while when I feel like my fans think that I'm not working on music. But you're slacking a little yeah, bit. And yeah, and I'm just like on podcasts talking about crazy aliens and stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm I'm just reassuring them that yeah. I am constantly working on music, okay. of course. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, we're, we are working on a lot of stuff, but it's not to the point where I can be like, you know, soon, like coming soon. Well, also you have, I imagine I'm no musician, not even close to that world at all. Mm. But you have to be inspired, right? Like yes. you can't just force it. Yeah. And you got to like the songwriter that I am, like the stuff I talk about, I need to actually live a life. Yeah. Have experiences yeah. to be able to reflect on and make yes. actual art. And out have of. like heartbreak. Yeah. And go to urgent care. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> Which I did I, yesterday. Like, these are two very different things that you just cited I had to go to, as the inspiration for your music. Yeah. Heartbreak, I get that. Urgent care. Urgent right. care. <laughs> which I had to go to yesterday. And I don't have insurance over here, obviously, right? Because right. I live in Korea. And they told me it could cost up to a thousand dollars. Okay, just for a checkup that I desperately what? needed. But I'm saying well, need, thank you I for need, being here today. And yeah. also, should you not be here today? No, no, no. <laughs> they told me it's completely uh, not contagious. Oh, great. Okay, okay. great. Um, <laughs> that was <laughs> really sketchy. That's, I feel like okay. now hearing that you tell people that you're working on music and that's kind of a lie. You telling me that's not contagious. I don't trust you. Well, <laughs> see, experiences like this are needed yeah. for me to write the heartbreaking songs that I write. Yeah, you I You need hope, to be in ER sometimes. I really, really hope that your next song is called urgent care it, yeah or whatever condition <laughs> i had i am suffering from yeah. uh, one or the other i mean there you you're writing the lyrics as you're talking yes yes uh okay if you were to let your wife marry an avenger which one would it be uh it would be dr strange really yes yes why uh, you know, like it would just be easier to take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, wait, are we? <laughs> you wouldn't feel as insecure. Are we assuming that, like, so she's married to me now, but it, it, is she like, uh, let's gonna say, be taken okay. away? Let's say, uh, let me kind of rephrase it. Let's say your wife gets a hall pass. She gets to sleep with an Avenger. Uh -huh. Who would it be? Not marry. Just have maybe not even sleep. Just have like a romantic night with. Uh. Not the Hulk. Anyone but the yeah, Hulk. Yeah, anyone but the Hulk. Anyone but Mark Ruffalo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Ant-Man. I would love it to be Ant-Man. Uh, so that I wouldn't classic. even know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay? I may even be there at the time. like, And I wouldn't know. That's very fair. Uh, what's day-to-day -day life like being the father of the coolest kid in the world? She wakes me up. Yeah. And then I, you know, all hell ensues like immediately. Oh, sure. She's very, very energetic. Yeah. And there's just so much that she like laughs at. Like she finds everything funny. That's great. Yeah, which I love because and actually right before I came to LA, uh, we spent like four hours on YouTube. Um, just watching random YouTube videos and Aww. being like confused by them, and I <laughs> collectively put up, yeah, confused. Yeah, I, I put up a little bit of it on Instagram, uh -huh. but like that's literally what we do. Like she plays a video, she's like, "Dad, look at this video." She plays the video, and it's like a weird cat or something, right? Yeah. And she's like, "What? I'm so confused. What?" <laughs> and then she goes to the next video. She's like, "What? I'm so confused." That's literally just me and my boyfriend getting high at night watching uh, YouTube. That's basically what we are like. Okay, yeah. and. For f and four hours just goes by. That's so sweet. Yeah, so that's what we do. Uh, someone wants to know, what is your philosophy? Uh, my philosophy is be good to people. Uh, that's work, great. Work hard. And that's pretty much all you need. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. Name an artist you've been currently loving or would think other people would enjoy listening to. Currently loving as in like a new artist? I mean, this... Uh, I say open ended. It can be someone that everyone knows. Uh huh. Uh, currently loving. Um, strangely enough, I've currently loved Bob Dylan. Really? Yeah. Cool. I I used to really like Bob Dylan as a kid and in like high school. Yeah. And then I fell out of love with Bob Dylan uh, when I recently found out that he was making a whiskey. You fell out of love yeah, knowing um, that he was making a whiskey. This was a couple of years ago. Uh, <laughs> he had just won like the Nobel yeah. Lit Prize, uh -huh. which was monumental. Yeah. And um, immediately decided to make a whiskey brand. <laughs> okay. And he's in and the, that he's turned in, you off. He's in the endorsement <laughs> of uh -huh. the whiskey brand. Yeah. It's like a picture of him making the whiskey. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, I was like, wait. He just won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Right. And the next move <laughs> is a whiskey brand. I mean, how do you not see this as an obvious move? Yeah. And I think the whiskey is called Heaven's Door. <laughs> okay. 
And I'm like, oh my god, right? Uh, so I fell out of love because uh-huh. uh, it was so jarring. He sold out. I mean, he got the rule book on selling out. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was jarring for me. Yeah. But recently, um, I was like, hey, you know, like, would I be able to not do a whiskey brand? Like, if I won the Nobel Prize, you know, like, would I not? Right. Go crazy. Well, would you not? Is that an avenue and that you wouldn't go down even if you, the Nobel Prize wasn't even in the In the picture, ether? right? Yeah. Like, do I not want a whiskey brand? Yeah, maybe that's your problem. Is and, <laughs> and I started listening to him again, okay. like heavily, uh, to make up for the judge, judgmental. And the like, lost time. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm glad that his actual music that has, you know, created his whole foundation of being yeah. amazing brought you back. Yes, yes. Um, now I want to try that whiskey. I'm not oh, even a whiskey yeah. drinker. See, but... I endorsed him. Yeah, you did it. Look, you accidentally gave him a tiny commercial yes, on this yes, podcast. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> uh, what is the weirdest superstition that you unconsciously believe in? Weirdest uh, superstition. superstition. I believe, I don't know if this is a superstition, but mm-hmm. I, I believe that um, like if you keep saying something, um, it happens. Oh, like manifesting things? Yeah, like speaking things into into being. Like you're going to have a whiskey line. You're going to have a whiskey yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a whiskey line. Yeah. And um, this is not a superstition, but it it gets in the way of a lot of work sometimes because like I'm so fixed on that. Yeah. That, like during meetings and stuff, if someone says anything negative. Yeah. Like even though it is something that needs to be said at the time. Yeah. And pointed out. That you're like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Like I don't want to hear it. Say it in your head. Don't say it out like, loud. Don't say it. Don't say it. Like, <laughs> you just said it. It's going to happen now. And they're like, I'll take it back. You can't take it back. It's, it's already been said. And I just wait for it to happen. Right? Wow. And my waiting is probably what's causing it. You're manifesting yeah. it then. Yeah. So um, that's like the only kind yeah, of now, superstition I have. I want to sit in on a business meeting with you now. Yeah, it's <laughs> super positive. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's only positive. It's like mansions for everybody. Everyone's dancing on eggshells yeah. being like, don't tell him anything bad. Uh, what's a crazy habit that your daughter has? A crazy habit. Or a my... weird habit. Um, I don't know if it's a weird habit. Um, she, uh, calls me, uh, well, she, she used to call me dude. That's sweet. That's yeah, cute. So she went from dad to dude. That's really cute, actually. And I think <laughs> it's a thing for her to catch up with the, you know, with the current word of yeah. endearment. Yeah. Cause one day she was like, I, I did something and she thought it was funny. And she was like laughing and she's like, that's so funny, bro. <laughs> So she started calling me bro. And then recently it was- That feels a little like uh, yeah. uh, 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 demoralizing. Yeah. And then she called me bruh at a certain point. Like, <laughs> and it just keeps changing what she calls me. So is she like some California surfer? I have no idea. Core? I have no idea. I don't know where she's getting it. But um, like every time it changes, I assume, you know, that's what kids call each other now. Uh, it's- Endearing and degrading at yeah. the same time. <laughs> it's like, bro? Uh, any genres Epic High would like to try out that they haven't done before? Maybe like smooth jazz? Uh, the only... What would I... I would like to try um, like, like death metal hardcore. Really? Yeah, like... Um, Have you guys ever talked about that kind of thing? Well, one of my members, yeah. um, when I discovered him in Korea, uh-huh. uh, was... Uh, doing a short stint as as a member of a horrorcore group. A quick stint, yeah. Yeah, okay. like, um, <laughs> and it was like really, really like, yeah, like, like that, vocal cords shredding. That was the me- med- melody. Yeah, that was the hook. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just did the hook for you guys. It was, Are we going to pay a licensing fee like, to this? <laughs> and um, and the lyrics were about like just horrifying things that only like belong in a Stephen King yeah, you know, world. The darkest okay. of dark. Yeah. yeah, just really dark, like nails, like judgment, Oof. like crosses, like just just insane things, yeah. right? That he probably didn't really even care about. Yeah. Right? Because he was a kid. Sure. And um, I want to go back to that with him, like that journey. I feel like and, now's the time. And I feel like I would be a very good, like gothic, like... Um, like 300 year old vampire, right? Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, a total rebranding. This feels like 
the next thematic tour that yeah, you guys yeah. take. And I think a lot of Epikai's music, if you nudge it a little bit to the dark side a little bit more, uh -huh. it, it could become that. Yeah. So we would do something like very like emotional, horror, death metal hip hop. I mean, just it's uh, right there for you. Just a horrible stew of like it's right there. Darkness <laughs> is what I want to do. Horrible stew is a great name for an album or a song to say. Yes. Um, okay, last question. Any advice that you would give to aspiring musicians? Uh, it's actually what I said earlier, but like that's my like mantra uh, or what I tell myself. Mm -hmm. um, just be good to people. Work really hard, yeah, and learn to do something that requires like absolutely nothing of you, but like means a lot to someone else. Okay, like, if you make a habit of doing that, yeah, um, like it's like if you enjoy your job, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, like y there's nothing you're gonna get out of what you're doing at that second, mm -hmm. but but like let's say it doesn't take that much away from you, yeah, right? to do something for this person, mm -hmm. uh, but it means like the world to them. That's cool. And if you make it a habit to do that every day, mm -hmm. like guaranteed amazing things happen uh. within, you know, months or within the year. Yeah. And um, I tell artists, you know, like it's not all about just being perfect at your craft. Right. Right. It's about like connecting with other humans, um, connecting with fans mm -hmm. and being authentic. And if you just learn to do that, like it requires truly nothing to make your fans smile once a, once in a while, yeah. right? Or to post something on Twitter. Um, that's like two seconds out of your life mm -hmm. that you can make them feel better for the day. Yeah. And I tell them just do that. And it all comes back somehow. Well, it's also, those are the people that are supporting you that are getting you to the level that you're at. Of so course. you have to pay them their due diligence a little They're bit. They're the ones buying your whiskey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Buying your death metal yeah. band albums. <laughs> yes. Yes. And your, and your merch yeah. and your horrible sellout merch. Um, so be good to them. That's yeah. very sweet. I think that's very encouraging. Okay, before you go, um, every guest that's on the podcast gets a personalized fortune cookie oh, nice. from us to them. So, Tablo, this is yours. Do I get you to can open, open it, it here? Of course. Okay. And you I can, hope it's something good. I do, too. I always get the, uh, like, you know, the statement. Yeah. That's, like, not helping me at all. Oh, well, this is really long. Yeah. This is a reminder to bring producer Diane a pack of White Claw back to Seoul because she is deathly curious as to know what all the hype is about. <laughs> this is a strangely specific fortune cookie. Wow, how weird. Wow. So strange that it this worked out that way. Producer Diane is someone that I know. Oh, wow. White Claw? What is that? Oh, boy. Oh, man. Pack You're now going to see that everywhere you go. Now that you've heard it, White Claw is the spiked seltzer. It's like a little uh, can of seltzer that has alcohol in it. Uh -huh. And it's like flavored like raspberry and lime and all these things. And it's become very popular it's here. Like, it's like super popular right now. Yeah. It's almost now going over the edge of being like too trendy popular that all of these other companies are creating their own versions of it. Oh my God. It's, it's, so it's you like have the to, four local of now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And it's, it's, it's undeniably refreshing. <laughs> you, you tried it obviously, right? Um, too much. Okay. We're getting it today. Yeah. You guys, ha I mean, before you leave, you have to take some back or try it while you're here. Okay. Um, Tablo, thank you so much for making thank time. You. Thank you for And having I hope you're me. not contagious. Um, I'm not. A few. I, I, urgent care you. told me I'm not. <laughs> yeah. At all. The, uh, for people that have no idea, where can they find you online? Where can they hear your music? Where can they see what Epic Highs up to you? I mean, all you have to do is just go to your favorite like search engine and search <laughs> Epic High, yeah. E-P-I-K, uh -huh. and then High, and it'll pop up, okay. right? And then you listen to us. There Check out our videos, or you just type in the Tableau and like it automatically blurts out the Tableau podcast. There you go. And you go and you listen. It's so simple. It's very simple. Very simple. Thank you for the step by step process for yes. people that don't know. Uh, again, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Of course. We'll see you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. With Grace Helbig.
Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, camera operator Katrina Henning, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. (laughs) 